so let's talk about uh, rotational work energy and momentum now it is very important for us to understand rotational motion because what we're going to be doing here we're going just to be adding up on a uh, rotational motion which is circular motion okay so let's begin our discussion with uh, rotational work now we know that work is force times distance that is under work energy and power now let's assume to say an object is moving around the circle so here is my object okay now i'm trying to um, i'm trying now to to push this using the force which i'm going to call f so the distance which is going to cover from this point all the way down here i'm going to call s which is the arc length in this case then we understand to say we're going to have the radius which we're going to call r now there's a concept which i'm going to introduce here which is torque but we are going to talk more about torque under static equilibrium but for now what you have to know is that torque is given by force times the radius so we can say it is the distance in this case that's the distance which we have so it is the force times the perpendicular distance so this is not t but it's just the symbol which we use for torque so the force times the perpendicular distance in this case the perpendicular distance is the radius okay now another thing which you have to remember is that if i've got an object then this is going to start from moving from this point all the way to this point let's call this point a this point b so this is going to be theta okay so let's say you're moving from point a all the way to point b the distance which we're going to cover is the s in this case is the arc length and we know that this is our radius okay then we can find the arc length to say the arc length is the theta times the radius now what we need to know is that the work which we're talking about here is basically the force times the arc length which is the s now the s which we have here is the same as the s which we're talking about there therefore i can replace s with theta times r so say my work will be equal to the force times theta times r but we know to say torque is given by force times the radius now i can isolate this and say i have got fr times theta and i know that f times r is the torque therefore under rotational work work is given by the torque times the theta so this is the formula for work okay so for now this is what we need to know under work so work is given by torque times theta that is under rotational work now if we go back to um, translational work where we say uh, force or work is given by force times the distance so in this case the distance is the same as the s so now the s when we, when we talk about rotation work it is the arc length now let's go ahead and um, talk about uh, power okay so in this case we're going to be talking about uh, rotational power so all the formulas they are coming from translational power so we know that power is given by the work times the time and we also know that work is force times distance so we can replace uh, force uh, work with um, force times distance divided by time what else can we see we can clearly see that power will be equal to the force i can isolate this and i do know that 
um, velocity is the distance over time. I can replace this with V. Power is the force times the velocity. This formula is under translational power. Now I'll start from there. When an object is moving around the circle, there is radius. This object is moving around the circle. We expect to have angular velocity. Therefore, we know that linear velocity is given by angular velocity times radius. I can replace V with WR. So power will be equal to the force times this. At the same time, we know that we can rearrange this and put it like this. Because I know that force times R is the torque. So power under rotational work energy and momentum is given by torque times angular velocity. So let me just put these formulas here. Let me just put this formula here. We have come up with work to be equal to the torque times theta. Then power we, have, we are saying is torque times angular acceleration. Now let's talk about energy. Whenever we're talking about energy, we have potential energy and kinetic energy. But in this case, potential energy will not change. It will be the same. Under translational, under rotational, we have mgh. But when we go to um, kinetic energy, we can notice to say we're going to have something there. So we have got what we call translational kinetic energy, which we know already is given by half mass times v squared. Okay. Then there's also what we call rotational kinetic energy. Now everything starts from here. I can drive the formula which is going to help me to find the uh, rotational kinetic energy starting from translational kinetic energy. As we can see, we have come up with the formula for work using translational work. Then we have come up with the formula for power using translational power. At the same time, we can come up with the formula for rotational kinetic energy using translational kinetic energy. So let's go. Um, what we have to remember, although I'm going to explain about this, but we know that we should know that inertia is given by mr squared. This formula is for inertia. Okay, the general formula for inertia, but I'm going to explain about inertia. I think that is going to be in the next video. Now, what we need to know here is that um, V is WR. I can replace V with WR so that I now move from translational kinetic energy to rotational kinetic energy. So I'll say rotational kinetic energy will be half the mass. mass times um, v squared so now v i can replace v with mr so it's going to be m r squared or it's going to be mr but i have to square this okay what else can we see <clears throat> now we can see that eh, these two guys rotational kinetic energy is going to be half I can clearly see that, uh, let's reverse this, we are saying that we need to replace V with WR, so it's supposed to be WR I square it. So now this is going to be the mass W squared R squared, okay? Now from here I can clearly see that what I'm going to have is going to be rotational kinetic energy will be half okay then I've got mass times R I can clearly see that I've got mass times R squared that is going to be inertia then I have this so this is my formula for rotational kinetic energy so rotational kinetic energy it can be denoted by RKE or 
kinetic energy then i put r here which is the same so now we have got three important formulas which we have to take note we have rotational kinetic energy which is half inertia times angular velocity squared that is the formula for rotational kinetic energy okay now let's see the relationship which is going to be there between work and kinetic energy remember we said that under um, translational work energy and power we mentioned to say the work done by a particular force is equal to the change in kinetic energy okay so if we can remember very well we said the work done maybe let's say the work net is equal to the change in kinetic energy now in this case we are talking about translational kinetic energy okay so the work net will be equal to the change in kinetic energy is the kinetic energy final minus the kinetic energy initial okay so now this is going to be the work net is going to be half the mass v final squared minus half the mass v initial squared this is the formula for work net under translational work energy and power now we are trying to to see the relationship which is going to be there between um the work net and translational and rotational kinetic energy so what i'm going to have is going to be the same network which is going to be now here we're going to be talking about the change in rotational kinetic energy okay and we know that rotational kinetic energy we can have the final rotational kinetic energy minus the initial rotational kinetic energy as simple as that okay so we need to know this relationship is very very important and it's going to help us to come up with some different formulas so this formula is important so we can use work net to say it is the change in kinetic energy in a case where we have got only one force then it's going to be that particular force is equal to change in rotational kinetic energy okay so now what i'm going to do is um i'm going to drive the formula for inertia or another formula which we have to come up with is um the formula for a uh, torque so we have two formulas for torque which we have to be familiar with now i'm going to do it from here initially we said torque is given by the force times the perpendicular distance in that case if you have got a circle it is the radius now let's talk more about work we are saying that work it can be given as the change in rotational kinetic energy now we are assuming to say there is no friction the only work done by that force is going to be the force applied at that point so what we're going to have is uh, is going to be uh, the work will be equal to the rotational kinetic energy final minus initial rotational kinetic energy so work will be equal to half um, we know that this is going to give us um, inertia this final squared minus half inertia initial now i can clearly see that i can factor out a half inertia so i'm going to have inside there i'll have um, the final minus the initial now i know that work is torque times the theta so i'll replace work with torque times the theta is going to be equal to half initial the final squared minus initial now it is squared now let's get rid of this now 
I can replace final angular velocity minus initial angular velocity with something else. Let's see. I can clearly see that this is coming from this formula. Uh, it is the angular, the final angular velocity <coughs> is equal to the initial squared plus 2 angular acceleration times theta. Now I'm trying to make, I'll shift the initial to the other side, then I'm going to have the final squared minus initial squared will be equal to 2 alpha theta. So I'm going to replace where there is this with 2 alpha theta. So torque times theta will be equal to half inertia. Then here I'm going to replace with 2 alpha theta. I can clearly see that 2 and 2 can go. Then I'll remain with um, torque times theta is equal to inertia times this. I can also see that theta appears both sides. I can cancel it. Therefore, another formula for torque is uh, inertia times the angular acceleration. So we, we need to be familiar with these two formulas. They are very, very important. So these are the two formulas for torque. So torque is given by force times perpendicular distance. I can also find torque using inertia times the, the angular acceleration. That is also important. Okay. So... This is it for the introduction of ro rotational work, energy and momentum.